Brethren, we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God. Will you pray with all your power while we try to preach the word? All is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One come down. Brethren, pray and holy manna will be showered. service it's uh, inconceivable lord but uh god uh, thank you that we can serve you down here help us as we look to you tonight give us something that we can use and take home and uh that'll help us uh, to do better for the lord jesus christ uh bless us now as we worship and preach and sing and all the things we do in your name in jesus name we pray amen and amen Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as they war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the Royal Master leads against the foe, forward into battle, see his banner go. Oh, <laughs> 
Okie dokie. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Here's the name of tonight's sermon. Continue. Galatians 5 verse 1. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold I Paul say unto you that if you be circumcised Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For though we, uh, for though, for we through the Spirit, I'll get it right, uh, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision availeth anything. Uh, or it says, or uncircumcision. Uh, but uh, faith which worketh by love. Ye did run well, who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through uh, the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. Heavenly Father, help us now as we look at this word. Continue. And Lord, help us to stay uh, by the stuff. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I want you to notice that this verse here is about standing by something and uh, continuing in something. And uh, that's one of the hardest things that Christians seem to have a trouble doing nowadays, most of them. Um, I mean, just look at most of your attendance. Uh, back 40 years ago, uh, preachers complained because folks didn't come on Wednesday nights. And then they started complaining that, well, now they're not coming on Sunday nights. Well, now they're not coming on Sunday mornings, a lot of them. Uh, let's face it. Um, if we had all the people that are members of our church that are on the rolls, and they appeared here during one service, we probably couldn't hold them all in this building. So where are they? Well, they're not continuing by the stuff. They're not standing by the stuff. They're not. Uh, some of them try to fool themselves. I realize that some people have problems. I mean, we have people that uh, uh, tonight they're hooked up to an IV by their bed. Well, obviously, that poor lady isn't going to come to church tonight. She can't. We have other people, you know, um, they had uh, uh, problems and they've been in the hospital lately. Uh, they're, they're probably not going to be here till they get over uh, being in the hospital and all that stuff. So, you know, there are perfectly legitimate reasons for not being in church. But the people I'm talking about are perfectly, uh, you know, able to wander Walmart, you know, and go to the beach and, you know, whatever they do on Sunday aside from go to church. And uh, my advice to them is they need to get back to the old-fashioned religion and start continuing in the faith. Uh, Galatians has a lot of this in it. Um... The difficulty that Paul saw when he wrote the Galatians is they weren't staying with what he taught them when he came to preach to them and then to set up their church and teach them in the faith. They weren't staying with that. They were, they were drifting off into something else. Uh, Galatians 2, um, verse 5 says, To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, 
that the truth of the gospel may continue with you. So Paul, from the very beginning, said, look, um, you, uh, I came in, in, and uh, uh, I, I, I put in trust that I'd get the gospel to you and set your church up. And there was people even back then who wanted to subvert the work that I was doing. Well, there's always people like that. You say, we have people like that? I'm sure we do somewhere. Uh, the biggest ally these people have is being in secret. Colossians 1.23 says, If you continue, there's that word continue again, If you continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which he had heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof Paul had made a minister. So, normal Christianity, if I had to give it a definition, is staying with the faith, being grounded. That means you got a good foundation, you're not going anywhere, you're settled, uh, you're not going to be flip-flopping all over the place, and you're not going to move, be moved away from the, the truth that you have from the scriptures. That's a normal Christian life right there. A lot of people don't live that Christian life. Something new comes along, guess what? They're right on after it. Especially if it's big and boisterous and, you know, got lots of, uh, you, woo -woo, you know, there's lots of woo-woo around nowadays. Well, you notice we don't have a whole lot of woo-woo around our church. Because our church is based on scripture, not woo-hoo. 1 Timothy 4.16 Take heed to yourselves and unto the doctrine continue in them. So there's continue again. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So Timothy, he tells Timothy, look Timothy, you need to make sure you stay grounded in what you're preaching and what I taught you. That way when you preach to others, they're not going to go astray. They're going to they're gonna take hold of that same, that same chain you took a hold of and grab a hold of it and, and be anchored with the anchor. 2 Timothy 3, 14 says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. So, how is it done, this continuing? Well, he explains to the Galatians here. Because one of his greatest wishes, apparently, for the Galatians, that they stay with the stuff and they not be knocked off the faith. So tonight, let's look at a few things. About what what's it going to keep us standing for the faith and where we're supposed to be? First of all, I want you to notice there in verse number one it says, "Stand fast." We're supposed to stand fast in this liberty, and, and notice we're supposed to be free from entanglements. Now, I'm not much of a fisherman, but what little bit I fished. The greatest problem I had fishing was entangling that line once I got it in the water. You say, well, why is that a problem? Because usually you can't see down in the water. You don't know what's down there. And you throw that little fishing line out there with that little hook and bobber and things, and it goes plunk in the water, and it goes down, and you don't know what it's getting into. Someone could have dropped, uh, you know, something down in there and it get, got caught up or maybe there was a big storm, washed a bunch of branches and stuff and then floated down to the, uh, somewhere uh, near the bottom and that hook gets caught up in there and, and it ain't going to catch no fish that way. It's entangled. Well, you can't get entangled. You can't. You say, well, how do you stand fast? Well, first of all, you got to stand fast in the Lord. Stand fast in the Lord. The Bible says as much. 1 Thessalonians 3.8 For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. Now Paul's being a little dramatic here. He wasn't going to die if they, if they didn't stand fast in the Lord. But he said, look, uh, you'll make me feel a whole lot better and I'll feel like more of a success in the Lord if you stand with the Lord. Uh, I don't see why people shouldn't stand with the Lord. I don't know about you, but God has been 
uh, very good to me. Um, I've been threatening myself to write a book one of these days, and I should ought to. There's a lot of things I could put in a book that would surprise people. Especially if I name names. I don't know if I got the guts enough to do that or not. Uh, it, it's amazing uh, what what people do. Um, sometimes they're people that, uh, uh, you know, are supposed to know better. And they still do it. And sometimes they don't know better. Um, but, you know, God puts up with most of them. And most of us when we do things that way. But I found uh, it goes better in my life, and I've noticed other people, it goes better in their life when they stand with the Lord and stand in the Lord. So what does it mean to stand in the Lord? Well, um, if you stand in yourself, that means you're going to be just totally dependent on you when something bad comes along. Isn't it nice when something bad comes along to be able to get down on your knees and say, God, I need you and I need you now. Philippians 4.1 says, Therefore, my brethren... Dearly beloved and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Uh, most everybody Paul wrote to, somewhere or another, he told them to keep, keep on keeping on in the right thing. Because that's what Christians are supposed to do. That's what makes a bad testimony to the world. That, that's, uh, you, you get some Christian that's uh, gone off the reservation with something, and, and you know, that's the first thing lost people. Well, well all about brother so and so. Well, yeah, I know all about them, but what about all the hundreds of others out there that are sticking with the stuff? Just because one guy goes off, uh, you know, does his own thing, don't mean God's in it or God approves of it or anything else. And what does that mean for you anyway? God said for you to get right with Him and stay right with Him. So, what, what, what does it matter with another person what He does? Or she does. Say, so, well, how do I stand in the Lord? Well, you stand in the Word. You stand in the Word. Reading the Bible every day was the best thing I ever started doing. I started doing it when I was still a teenager. Uh, after I got saved, there was a, uh, a few years. And, and to tell you the truth, I tried to read my Bible then. Um... I didn't mu get much encouragement. I, I, I didn't get much uh, uh, training. Uh, I went to a Christian school and they said to read your Bible. Um, and, uh, you know, I said, okay. And I would start reading it and, uh, you know, I'd get in the middle of Genesis and all them begats and then I'd stop for a while and then I'd start again and then I'd get some over or some other place and... You know, well, then I'd stop a while and start a while. I think through the first four or five years I was saved, I may have read my Bible through one time. But after I got into Bible college, and uh, I realized what a uh, powerhouse this was, every day I started reading it. And I've read it through at least one, one time a year, since then, sometimes twice. Now, I, I don't recommend any schedule particularly. But uh, once a year seems to be a nice little clip. It's about two or three pages in the Bible every morning. And uh, plus I've added to that a, a, a chapter of Proverbs. I've, I've added a psalm to that every day. And that's what I do every morning. I get up and I read my psalm, and I read my Proverbs, and I read my little Bible section. And uh, I learn a lot that way. I filled up uh, margins of lots of Bibles with little notes and things. Um, I got where I went to the, I started going to the uh, uh, one of these dollar places, and they have these little um, uh, staple little books. They're, they're about that thin, and they're about, they, they fit in your Bible. And I started buying them, and I started writing notes in them. Uh, when I get a sermon, I, I have one stuck in the, the back of the one I read every morning. And when I get a sermon, I pull that thing out, and I write the sermon out. Then when, later on in the daytime or next day, I, I get the little book out, and I, 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 I develop it into a sermon. Many of the sermons that you hear come, come from that little book, and which comes from just, just daily Bible reading. Second Corinthians, uh, no, Second Thessalonians, rather. Corinthians comes next. 
2 verse 15 says, Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. So I want you to notice that this is tradition. You say, well, this is nothing but that old traditional. No, no, it's tradition based on the word. See, there's traditions where you have, you know, these churches where they get up and get down and get up and get down. And, you know, they make all kinds of things. And, you know, they say these same little prayers every week. You know, that's, that's the other kind of tradition. When you're talking about the tradition of the word, that's something different. You got 66 books of things to explore when you're a preacher of the Bible. It's very nice. And, and, and there's a lot of things to, to, to study and to hold to. Uh, here's Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. Now I want you to notice that it takes fortitude, intestinal fortitude, just stick with the word. Uh, look, life sometimes is kind of stinks. Your wife is sick. Or your husband's sick. Or your kids are sick. Or the car's busted. Or there's something wrong with the house. Or some other thing that comes on in life. And it's very wonderful to have something that you can depend on that doesn't change all the time. You can go to God and say, God, the, the junk's at it again. I need your help. And you know, God, God's there for you. To stand fast, you have to stay away from these entanglements. Stay away from bad things. What's an entanglement? It's a bad thing that can trap you and get you. 2 Thessalonians 2.15 uh, talks about standing fast and holding the traditions. Um, 2 Peter 2 verse 19 While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, the, of the same he is brought in bondage. For if after they had, have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it turned from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Peter says, look, if you're not going to stick with the stuff, you better not start out with it to begin with because you'd be better off if you start out with God and then you decide, you know, well, no, I don't want that. Things don't usually work out real good. There's a there's an ancient uh, tale. It's, um, they have these heroic sagas going back uh, in uh, Norse mythology and in, in Greek mythology. And there's a story about a one figure uh, of an old pilot who was sailing his boat in the crisis of a storm uh, during a great uh, tempestuous storm on the Aegean Sea. Uh, and in his extremity, he was seen to stand erect and cry in his old pagan way, Father Neptune, you may sink me if you will, you may save me if you will, but whatever happens, I will keep my rudder true. Well, that's, that's an interesting story. But you say, well, how that I can apply to Christians? Look, the storms of life are going to come. And some of them are going to be pretty bad. And uh, whether you make it through the storm or whether you're not, this guy says, look, I'm going to hold my rudder and I'm going to hold it steady and I'm going to hold it true to the course that I'm supposed to be on. That's a good example for Christians. Because the storm comes along, wants to beat you off the path, wants to get you wrecked up on the rocks here. And it's hard to hold that rudder steady. But we need a little intestinal fortitude to stand and not get entangled again with stuff that's going to... Uh, the worst thing that happened to a boat is getting something all tangled up in the rudder because you can't steer the boat. Well, the next thing I want to say, well, not only do we need to stand fast and become free from entanglements, but we need to wait 
by faith. Wait by faith. But we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Everyone has to wait sometimes. I really hate to tell folks that. Um, I hate to wait. I don't know about you, but I hate to wait. Uh, <laughs> you, I get aggravated at Walmart here lately. Um, they got all these little robot check your out things, you know, where you check yourself out. Well, I don't like them things. I got a buggy full of groceries. I mean, it's filled to the brim, sometimes heaping over. And, you know, it takes me forever and a day to check that stuff out myself. So I want the people that are supposed to be expert to check me out at the checkout place. But you go up there, and there's a little there's a little line where the counter's about that big by the cigarette place over there, one checkout lady. And if you're lucky, there's one more thing that's open with a conveyor belt that you can go stand in. Well, guess what? You get up there, and there's a line. Always, because there's only one place really open that's a real checkout place. So I get in line. Say, do you like it? No. Do I do it? Yes. Because I don't want to check my own groceries out. It does give me a chance to talk to people. But you have to wait sometimes. We were at the bank. When we were at the bank? Last Monday or something, we, were, we, were, we, were, we had to go to the credit union. And the, the lobby was closed, but the little window was still open. So there was somebody up at the window, and there was a car behind them, and then we got in line. And that car that was up at the window, I don't know what he gave them, because we didn't see him pull up. I think he must have given them all pennies, a whole $2,000 worth of pennies or something. Because... It, it took that man a half an hour at that window before that little tray went over and he picked up his little slip and he went on. But I'm going like, what in the world are they doing in there? You know, because I couldn't go into the thing. It was closed. So finally he got along and, and you could see the lady right behind him and, and she was having a very spirited conversation with whoever was at the window. I think she was fussing at him. Well, they couldn't do anything about it. You know, and I got up there and I, I made a little joke and you know, and told the lady I appreciated her. Because I do that one. You know, because obviously uh, that, that first guy that was in line must have been a real, real something to go get his stuff done. And, uh, but you have to wait every now and then. You, you, you just can't help it. Um, go to the doctor's office. They'll make you wait. They make you wait out in the waiting room, out in the big place. And then they'll show you back to the... Um, place and take your blood pressure and all that and then they'll take you back to the little room and then you're sitting you'll wait on the doctor all by yourself back in the little room i thought to myself why don't you let you sit out there till the doctor's ready for you and bring you in uh just a new kind of waiting i suppose but but we gotta wait uh even even back in bible days people had to wait job 17 says if i wait the grave is mine house and I had made my bed in the darkness. Uh, Job was kind of a, do a gloomy, doomy fellow sometimes during the book of Job. But he says, look, I'm waiting for the grave. And everybody is. But everybody's got to wait. Uh, you know, even the devil waits. Did you know that? And he's really good at it. So what do you mean? Psalm 1... Uh, Uh, no, Psalm 10, verse 9. Oh, I got that all screwed up, didn't I? Got one thing written down here, and I got the right thing written on here. Uh, he lieth away secretly as a lion in his den. Now, the New Testament says Satan is a roaring lion. Well, he also sits there and waits, lies in wait for you to come by his den. And he lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the the poor when he draweth him into his net. So the devil's waiting for people just to come by to reach out and snatch them. So if the devil's got to wait, don't think you're going to get by with it. Not waiting. Uh, but you know what? God can help us. He helps us trust in him. He helps us wait. It's so nice 
to have God help us wait. And waiting's hard. Psalm 27, 14, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Uh, Psalm 37, 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him that prospereth in his way, because of the man that bringeth wicked devices to pass. Psalm 39, 7, now Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Now, haven't you said that to the Lord? So, Lord, you made me wait. What in my world am I waiting for, God? Sometimes you'll ask that question. I'm not sure it's good to, but you will ask it. A nobleman once gave a celebrated actress a Bible, telling her at the same time there was a treasure in it for her. Well, she was thinking that the little religious noble guy, he was just he was just religious and he'd given her this Bible and that's what he meant by treasure. So, you know, she she uh, laid the Bible aside somewhere, you know, never never even looked at it. Well, one day she finally died and all that she had was sold off. And the person who bought the Bible got it and uh, turning over the pages in the Bible, lo and behold, he found a note, a bank note, for $2,500. Uh, he thought to myself, well, I wonder if this lady knew this was in there. Well, she didn't. See, he told her, go, I'm giving you a treasure, and she didn't even think enough of the Bible to even look in it, and, and did without that money, all the time and then died without having it. And here's this guy, you know, had she read her Bible, had she even looked through it, she would have found this little goodie in there for her. You have to wait by faith. You have to have some faith that God's going to do some things for you. Not only that, lastly, there's the working by love. You know what? Uh, we need to work for the Lord. And God works for us. And, and it should all be done by love. Verse number 6 there in chapter 5, Galatians, says, For in Christ, Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. So that waiting by faith and that standing fast in the faith, all that has to work by love. It's kind of grease that greases the gears for the Christian. God works in us. Ephesians 1, 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us work who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, God's all the time wanting to work in your life, in your heart, in your mind, and you ought to let him. Um, it's a great thing to have God work on you. There was an old farmer... He had a weather, uh, unusual weather vane on the barn. Uh, inscribed on the arrow were these words, God is love. And a passerby turned in the gate and asked the farmer, what do you mean by that? I'll, I'll put it on the uh, weather vane. Do you think God's love is changeable? Is that what you're trying to say? Then it veers about as the arrow turns in the wind. He said, oh, no. The farmer said, no, no, that's not what I mean. What I mean is no matter which way the wind blows, God still is love. <laughs> Amen. That's a good way to think of it. God's all the time working in us. Um, and you know what? God working with us helps us to work. I, I mean, uh, sometimes we think we've done this great thing for God and when it really boils down to it, God has been working to help us do this thing all along. And we should give him the credit. Colossians 1.29, Whereunto also uh, I also labor, striving uh, according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. So Paul said, look, I've been here working with you and striving and doing all this thing, but really when it turns down to it, God's been working in me. So I could work for you. And I want to say this, lastly, is payday is coming. 
payday's coming. Look, if you stand by the stuff, and you wait by faith, and you work by love, payday is coming. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8 says, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to, unto all them also that love his appearing. I love his appearing. I can't wait to see him. And that day when we see him, and we stand before him, and he brings out all the things that we've done, I hope, he says, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. In conclusion, I want to go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 3. It says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. Boy, we live in that day, don't we? There's more scoffers walking after their own lust. Than got, Carter's got a little liver pill, boy. And saying... Where is the promise of his coming? Yeah, a lot of people say, well, where, where in the Bible does it say, talk about the rapture? Matter of fact, there's a couple things on YouTube that are exactly that subject this week. Uh, one says, the rapture is not in the Bible. Another one says, is the rapture in the Bible? I haven't looked at them. I don't care to look at them. I know that the rapture is in the Bible. The word rapture is not in the Bible, but that don't mean the thing ain't in the Bible. Is that that's just something we learn to call it? It's the great catching away. It, it, it's it's the uh, day that he uh, comes and gets us and takes us on to glory. Those that are dead in Christ and those that are alive. Saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Well, that's a bunch of hogwash. It has, a, it has not. It has not. If you want to get an education, look up natural disaster on the YouTube or Wikipedia. Man, there'll be a whole list of things that's happened. Some of them quite big. Some of them quite big. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, that's Genesis 1-2, Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the earth also, and the works that are therein and shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking forward, hastening unto the coming of the day of the God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, saying that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye be found of him in peace. Without spot and blemish. So you say, well, how do you stand up? Well, you get to that place where you got peace and you got no spots and you got no blemish and you're able to stand there and do the right thing. And you do it by God's help. Giving Him the credit. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank God we can stand. Thank God, there's a lot of things to stand up against. There's a lot of things that come along our way that we don't solicit or even look for and they still batter us. I pray that when these things come, they won't take us by surprise. And God will be there standing for you. 
And God, the day you come back and sound the trumpet, I pray we'll be standing for you. And God, you'll look down at us that day and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear, God, so badly. Lord, help us now. And I pray you bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.